just a lot of very exciting you know, AI features that we you know, already infused into Microsoft products like Office 365. But at Microsoft, we also want to make sure that we can offer this kind of incredible AI experiences you know, to our partners and the developers. You know, how can we help them to build you know, just as exciting AI applications? I've talked earlier about AI platforms and other things. I also want to mention that you know, key to making great AI apps is the data. That's where you know, actually Microsoft you know, is in a unique position to offer our partners, developers, and the partners to help them to build AI applications by you know, providing them Microsoft graphs. It includes you know, world knowledge graph, like what you can get from Bing and the LinkedIn, and also work knowledge graph you know, from Office 365 Dynamics. Now imagine that you know, all our, custom, you know, our customers and partners, you know, they can combine Microsoft graphs with their own you know, business data and uh, knowledge about their own users to build incredible AI applications you know, for their customers, for their employees, and uh, for their business. So we feel very, very excited about the opportunities there that we can work together. And the one particularly unique thing about Microsoft is that we have worked long and hard to bring many of these graphs you know, together contained within a compliance boundary that actually conforms to our privacy, compliance, and also data policies. That's very, very important to enterprises. So those investments really underscore what we have been doing you know, in Microsoft AI and the research. Those are five things actually I talked to you today. I just want to finish my presentation by mentioning you know, some also important and exciting topics nowadays as people talk about AI development in partnership, in society, and also in ethics. So as we embrace this AI frontier, you know, we have to acknowledge that you know, concerns about AI do exist. And it's actually important that we have some universal design principles and the values that help guide our thinking our design and development. At Microsoft, we take an ethical approach to AI design sincerely and seriously. Our principled approach is actually very critical. You know, we do these things thoughtfully and in a trustworthy way, both inside Microsoft and also outside. For example, internally, you know, we have organized an advisory committee that helps ensure the adherence of these principles in our own AI development. And externally, we recognize that we cannot do that alone. So we co-founded the Partnership on AI just over a year ago. This is actually a nonprofit organization where you see you know, many leading tech companies and academia, civil societies, and uh, many, many nonprofit organizations who actually care about the future of AI development. So this is actually set up to study, formulate, and share the best practices on AI technology for all of us. So we also believe that we need to give back as we develop AI. So I'd like to take this opportunity to thank iNaturalist, you know, who is a great partner in our AI for Earth program. They are here today. I encourage you to stop by their booth to talk to them what they do for our society. And finally, I would say, as the first generation to live with AI, we play a very unique role in shape, shaping the future. As we will do so, you know, that is actually thoughtful. That is really our number one focus in Microsoft. So there's a lot we don't really know about AI's impact yet. But what we do know is that AI has a lot of potential to really improve lives. And it's already happening now. So let me share a story with you about how AI has given voices to those who otherwise would have had none. Swift Key Symbols is a communication app for people who are nonverbal, and it supports them in expressing themselves. Rowan, my youngest brother, has low-functioning autism. He finds it difficult to communicate and can get very upset if he can't make himself understood. 
I took what we used at home with some symbols that my mum would print out, laminate, cut out, stick Velcro on, put them into folders, and I just thought I could make that easier. If we did it on an app, they're more fun for Rowan because he loves technology. The underlying AO technology which SwiftKey Symbols uses is the same technology which powers the SwiftKey keyboard. We use AI technology to be able to learn from the user's behaviour, to see what they like to use in terms of their own style of language, to predict what's going to come next. It works by having a library of symbols that you can pick and choose to build your sentence, and each symbol has a word associated with it. And that we use SwiftKey AI predictive technology to learn what you've used previously, sentences that you've previously built, and then we surface what word you might want next and what symbol you might want next to build your sentence. I want juice, please, Kate. <gasps> We developed it alongside Riverside School, which is a school specialising in learning difficulties. So you to be able to express what they want without prompting is a really big thing. Go on then, ready? I, I, I want a cow. We have so many pupils who are non-verbal, but still have so much to say. I think AI can just make everything in life more efficient, so you can enjoy life to the max. There's no better feeling than to hear a child say something that they've wanted to say and the look on their face after they've, they've been able to say it. You can't really beat that because that's them expressing themselves and that's really what you want from them. It's joyous. I don't think I can think of a better word for it. It's complete joy and celebration. It's really an incredible time working on AI and use AI to amplify human ingenuity. And we're very excited to work on those things at Microsoft. Thank you very much again for joining us today. You know, please, you know, if you have time, hang on here, check out all the booths. Thank you very much.